President Trump has canceled his summit with North Korea. Meanwhile, he and his allies are pushing a baseless conspiracy theory about the Russia probe. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. <laughs> President Trump has spent weeks hyping his upcoming summit with North Korea. He's earned glowing praise from the media, chants of Nobel from his crowds, and his government even made a commemorative coin to mark the occasion. And you know what? I was so excited, I actually logged on to the White House gift shop and bought one of those coins myself. Here it is. There it is. Because I wanted to be a part of history. So here's to you, Mr. President, and all your success. Breaking news. Back with our breaking news, President Trump has just written a letter to Kim Jong-un, the leader of North Korea, canceling the June 12th expected summit in Singapore. Damn it! <laughs> Although, it's my fault. I should have learned my lesson after I bought commemorative coins for the completed border wall. Biggest inauguration ever. Anthony Scaramucci's first 100 days on the job. Cleared of all charges and people's sexiest man alive. So, Trump canceled the summit, which shouldn't surprise anyone. He earned backslaps from the media desperate to praise him for something, but he repeatedly made clear he had no idea what he was doing. For example, when he spoke today at the White House, Trump urged North Korea to give up its nuclear weapons. North Korea has the opportunity to end decades of poverty and oppression by following the path of denuclearization. There you go. He wants them to follow the path of denuclearization. But when he was asked on Tuesday how denuclearization would work, Trump claimed he totally knew but wouldn't go into detail. You have an idea of how denuclearization would take place? Would it be I, I do. I have a very strong one? idea how it takes place. And it must take place. That's what we're talking about. It must take place. So, but I have a very strong idea, and I have very strong opinions on the subject. Once again, Donald Trump is a teenager who didn't prepare his oral report and is now stalling for the bell to ring. I know a lot about the Louisiana Purchase. It's fascinating, a fascinating purchase. And uh, I have very strong feelings about it <laughs> that I want to share with you, ring, you damn son of a bitch. So Trump is flailing on foreign policy. Maybe, just maybe, he's distracted by the Russia investigation, which seems to get worse for him every day. Since the investigation began, Trump and his allies have tossed out one crazy conspiracy theory after another, like when Trump said his wires have been tapped at Trump Tower, or when they said two FBI agents had a secret society to undermine Trump. Trump loves conspiracy theories so much I'm shocked he hasn't accused Don Jr. of being a secret lizard person. <laughs> have you seen the way he blinks? Now, every one of those claims turned out to be total BS. In fact, Trump's crimes are apparently so obvious that his lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, is now trying out a new tactic. Instead of denying the collusion happened, he's saying if it did happen, it wasn't illegal. In an interview with Huffington Post Wednesday, Giuliani initially disputed the notion that Trump's daily citing of Russian stolen emails constituted colluding with Russia. It is not, Giuliani said. Then he switched tacks. Okay, and if it is, it isn't illegal. It was sort of like a gift, and you're not involved in the illegality of getting it. Yeah, if somebody gives you something that stole, that doesn't make you a criminal. It makes you a pawn shop. <laughs> also, are we sure Giuliani isn't working for Robert Mueller? First, he told Sean Hannity that Trump did pay off Stormy Daniels. Now this. If you called Rudy in for questioning, you wouldn't need to do good cop, bad cop, because he would confess to the good cop. So can I get you a cup of coffee? All right, I did it. I killed my wife. <laughs> we brought you in for a robbery. I did that too. <laughs> if Rudy sang Bob Marley at karaoke, he changed the lyrics to, I shot the sheriff, but I did not shoot the deputy. But even if I did shoot the deputy, that wouldn't be illegal. And also, I did shoot the deputy. <laughs> so... So because they don't have a good defense, Trump and his allies have instead decided to go on offense, creating one fiction after another to discredit the investigation. A central figure in that effort has been Republican Congressman Devin Nunes, who in every single photo looks like he just realized he brought you the wrong entrees. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, you said veal? I thought you said eel. Nunes has used his perch on the House Oversight Committee to extract information about the investigation and then use that information to help Trump manufacture conspiracy theories. And it's not just Nunes. Trump's allies in the right-wing media have been happy to run with his wild spying claims. Just take Fox News host Maria Bartiromo. She accused both President Obama and Hillary Clinton of being a sinister plot to 
take down Donald Trump during the campaign. Listen as she rambles through a list of all the favorite right-wing buzzwords. In March of 2016, Sally Yates and Loretta Lynch were both briefed by Jim Comey. A couple of months later, we start seeing all the dossier information and that there's a dossier being written. And then we know that that, that dossier was used to get a warrant to wiretap and to spy on the Trump campaign. We also know, based on the text messages between FBI agent Peter Strzok and his girlfriend, Lisa Page, that he said, quote, President Obama wants to know everything we're doing on this. So, <laughs> right. where was Obama? I don't know. You know where, what do those texts and all of this right. information tell us where Obama was? It sounds like either President Obama or Hillary Clinton were sort of masterminding all of this. Think about how insane that theory is. She's saying Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton sent a spy to infiltrate Trump's campaign so they could get dirt on him and then chose not to use that dirt during the election. <laughs> Mr. President, we found the P tape. Should we leak it? No, no, uh, save it for my Netflix deal. <laughs> I, uh, I got an idea for a limited series. You'd watch. <laughs> Trump and his allies are literally just making it up. And because he's the president, the media thinks they have to take it seriously. For example, Giuliani made headlines over the weekend when he claimed out of nowhere that Mueller hopes to finish the obstruction investigation by September 1st. By putting an end date on the obstruction inquiry, he is apparently seeking to publicly pressure Mueller to stick to that timeline. I'm sorry, you think you can pressure Robert Mueller? <laughs> Look at that dude. That dude plays Jenga to relax. <laughs> he has more steel in him than Wolverine. His last job was support beam. They make skyscrapers out of Robert Mueller. <laughs> well, this will shock you. It turned out Rudy's claim about the September 1st deadline was entirely made up. Like Trump, Rudy just goes on TV, makes stuff up, and the media repeats it because they think they have to. For example, Rudy also claimed recently that the president could just ignore a subpoena from Mueller because past presidents have done the same thing. But after he said that, a clip of Giuliani from 1998 resurfaced, insisting that then-President Clinton would have to testify if he was subpoenaed. If the president is asked to testify, subpoenaed to testify before a grand jury, and says, no, not going to do it. You got to do it. I mean, you don't have a choice. Well, he's sending signals that he might not do it. Well, then, I mean, there is, a, there is a procedure for handling that. You go before a judge, and a judge decides whether or not he has a recognizable exemption or privilege from testifying. And if a judge decides he doesn't, then you have to testify. You don't have a choice about that. Wow, that interview has not aged well. <laughs> Unlike Rudy Giuliani, who doesn't look a day over Crip Keeper. <laughs> so Rudy... He's obviously lying and contradicting himself, and yet the media keeps talking to him. Last week on CNN, Rudy insisted that if Mueller were to subpoena Trump, he would interfere in the investigation by going to Attorney General Jeff Sessions and Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein and telling them to stop the subpoena. If Mueller did it, the Justice Department could take the subpoena right back. Or you could just litigate it. Yeah, but right? the he could subpoena I him and you could litigate it. I'd go right to the Attorney General. I'd say, Jeff, you know, put on big boy pants and you go take it away. Well, but he's recused from this. Then I go to Rosenstein and say, you want to try the big boy pants off his size? You put them on, and you right. get rid of the subpoena. Rudy sounds like a flustered salesman at a store called Big Boy Pants. <laughs> what about you? Two for one big boy pants? Oh, come on, Rudy, you got to make a sale. <laughs> and I'm sorry, but if Jeff Sessions tried to put on big boy pants, they'd go up to his nipples. <laughs> now, there is no reason. No reason to ever believe what Trump, Rudy, or their allies say about the Russia investigation. They've proven time and time again they have no compulsion about lying and contradicting themselves. The media should stop taking them seriously. In other words, the media should put on their... Big boy pants. This has been a closer look.